So much news, so little time. Uh, guys, this might be the first database that I'm aware of, at least, that implements natively gRPC. So if you don't know gRPC, and I talked about gRPC right here, guys, gRPC is a protocol that is built by Google on top of the HTTP2 to support multiplexing, to become language neutral so that it converts anything it builds essentially the the necessarily construct uh, to communicate with the other party without you having to worry about a client right because that's what's the one of the worst thing right if i want to communicate in a specific protocol i need to understand the language of that protocol whether that's uh, uh, http http2 whether that's your custom protocol, uh, XMPP, uh, Postgres protocol. Yes, Postgres have a protocol. Redis. All of these have some on-wire protocol uh, semantics. And building a client that understands how to talk that protocol is absolutely difficult, especially when you start upgrading. So this database solve this problem it's called event store so they are based on event sourcing which is something very very new and very very interesting and uh it's 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 something that's coming into the databases right kafka kind of started it with the idea of having and storing events and storing instead of storing states right it's like instead of storing that hey uh, the current order is a thousand dollar. No, you store the the events that led to that thousand dollar, right? Oh, maybe you bought this and then this and then you deleted this and then you created this and then at the end you calculate these changes based on that. Different topic for a different day, but guys, this is interesting. I've been I've been praising this thing for a long time. Not the idea of gRPC on top. Of databases per se but the idea of multiplexing the idea of multiplexing multiple queries multiple transaction multiple requests into the same connection let's talk about this let's let's read let's read the news the core product now includes gRPC as the default communication protocol to event store DB for both client server and server server communication for this case in addition to existing client java and dotnet they are adding node.js go rust and haskell and now it's very easy right because because grpc allow you the protocol itself you can just do a proto buff because it's built on protocol buffers right you can just create a proto file and compile that proto file into a language that has essentially the necessary structures to talk uh, in that proto format, which is very, very powerful. Even StoreDB is framework independent. That's their selling point now, right? They're, they're selling it. They said, hey, any language you want, you can talk to our database. Uh, you don't have to worry about installing specific libraries or worrying about upgrading that thing. They just embrace grpc very very interesting they have versioning numbering strategy so uh, if you want to do uh, optimistic concurrency control that's very interesting the addition of grpc support is undoubtedly the most fundamental change to the core platform by making it the default network communication for both client server and server server communication that when i say server server that means between the clusters that they have event source the database itself they talk in grpc very very powerful guys because they don't mention this at all this article but one of the most powerful thing in grpc is multiplexing this has significantly expanded the possibility of extending the platform especially for multi-language support so that's what they focus on oh multi-language multi-language no mention of beautiful multiplexing Okay. Now let's talk about the problem. Oh, obviously, certificates and security comes by default with HTTP2, which is built, uh, which is what gRPC is built on top of them. They talk about these, which is a very good step. But I want what I want to talk about here is, guys, the idea of having gRPC 
as, as a protocol on the back end, specifically with your databases. What, what problems do we have today, guys? What problems do we have today? All right, guys, so what, what problem do we have today? If I have a beautiful database here, and excuse my terrible drawing here. So I have a database here, and I have a backend application, right? That's my backend application. Could be Node, could be anything else, could be Go, right? And then client here, your beautiful, your beautiful client sits here, and then makes a request. And you have another client here, right? That makes a request. And then you, have, ugh. then you have another client here. And that makes a request. Boof, right? So all these requests from different clients need to come to Node, and Node on the back end will, if necessary, talk to the database, right? So a naive implementation will be to establish for each client establish a dedicated connection, right? TCP connection on the back end between node and the database. That does not scale, right? That does not scale at all. Because what if you have 1,000 users? You're going to create 1,000 database connections. That's just dumb, right? So what do we do? We invented the idea of connection pooling. So we said, okay, let's create one connection, three, four, seven, 10, 20. And then we're going to call it a pool. This is a pool of connections. So if you, as a client, uh, made a request to Node, I'm going to reserve one connection, execute the query, and get back a result, right? And then return that connection back to the pool, right? And if all of the connections are busy, those clients have to wait. You might say, Hussein, why are we doing this? Why can't we use one connection for everything? Let's just execute all of them. Bad idea, bad idea. I talked about why nobody should do this. And here's why. It could be very dangerous to use a single connection for multiple clients because the order and the head of line blocking that the database, uh, to the database, this single connection belongs to one client, which is Node.js, if you have one connection, right? But, of, but now you're using it to simulate multiple clients, right? So now if you get, how, do you, how does Node know that, oh, if I get a response from the first query that belongs to the first client, and if I get the second, it belongs to the second. There is no way to guarantee that. It's very, very hard, especially if there is proxies in the middle here, right? If you have proxies, dude, that's just the worst. There is no way you can guarantee this order. And that's what the problem we have in HTTP 1, right? I don't want to make this video longer than that, but the idea here is to introduce multiplexing, right? Have one TCP connection and have the knowledge of streams right here. Streams. If you have a stream like HTTP2, that's how HTTP2 solved the problem. Of you can just have a stream for every database connection and all of a sudden you have access to a dedicated channel that can be reserved for each client. And that's what those guys did. Now, I don't want to get this, make this any complicated than that, but here's the thing about event store. So when I talked about a stream, a stream in gRPC speak is a channel that belongs to that same TCP connection. And you can have, I think, up to 200 streams per gRPC connection, right? And, and those are HTTP2 streams. And you have lower level access to them. The problem here that I don't understand in this doc, which, which is very, very lacking, in my opinion, it's very, very shallow, right? It's, it's not, scarcity is a really big thing here. They really need to work hard on the doc. It's fair. They don't explain what a stream is here because apparently they have this concept of a stream in event sourcing, just like Kafka, right? The idea of stream in event source is a very, very overloaded. They talk about streams as if it is a Kafka topic very similar to, as a topic. That's why you have to, oh, you can delete a stream, you can write to append to a stream, you can scroll through a stream. But when it comes to gRPC, right? gRPC, guys, is also has the idea of streams. And ha they have nothing to do with the streams in the database that they are discussing. So it'll be challenging. That, that's my limit. My, that's, that's the criticism that I have for event store DB 
And I think they're going to struggle in explaining the difference between these two abstractions because gRPC has stream and now the databases also have stream which has it's 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 a persistent model it has nothing to do with the actual streams that are in gRPC i'm very very concerned uh, when it comes to that and because uh, remember guys the database was built for two tier architecture that's what we originally built it for we built it for a client that connects directly to their database and queries ad hoc information or does something and then process this information directly but when we move to a three-tier architecture which with a web server in the middle now we have a client which is a web server a front end that talks to a backend which is the database but guess what it's not the main client there are other clients that made this request and we have the same thing with microservices exactly the same thing right so now we needed another layer that kind of discriminate against those different then clients that are making that request to the backend the web server right and then we, we came up with a pooling idea, which is awesome, which is working, but that's extremely expensive. We have so many connections that open, closing, and all that stuff. All right, guys. And uh, still, we need, we need to build a database uh, that supports natively a multiplexing protocol. All right. I'm going to wait for it. And uh, eventually, I really need to sit down and just do the work. All right. I'm really, really excited about this, guys. And uh, guys, uh, what do you think about this? GRPC, are you using GRPC? Are you using event store? Let, let us know, because I don't know anything about event sourcing. Very, very little. So I'm going to leave the question back to you, and I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.